What's up guys, it's the Team JB coming at you with the Satella Knight deck profile for the April 2015 format. The ban list was just announced and a lot of major changes occurred. Clifford's absolutely got the hammer by Konami, which is really good for this deck because uh, that was this deck's hardest matchup, so this deck definitely got a lot better. Uh, I think Necros is definitely going to be the best deck, and Burning Abyss will be a close second. I know Tour got hit, got hit, but trust me guys, that is not that relevant of a hit. The deck will still be probably the second best deck. And I definitely feel Satellite Nice will be the best rogue deck. So with the um, less prevalence of Cliff Force, MST is going to see a decline in play. Um, Necros are going to drop it so they get the advantage in the mirror. And this deck will definitely um, prosper from that because Call of the Haunted and Oasis will go off a lot easier. And those are your power cards which allow you to go Trevere, uh, which is your win condition. So without further ado, let's get into the profile. Uh, I know I've been gone for a really long time. I've been really busy. Uh, but that's no excuse, and uh, without further ado, the show goes on. Let's get into the profile. Um, so to start off the list, we run triple uh, Satellite Knight Deneb. It's by far uh, the backbone of the deck. Uh, you go into this card almost every turn. Just um, really good to recycle with uh, triple Altair. Again, really standard. Um, next we've got three Unical High. Um, this may seem like overkill, but again, once you see the traps, this will definitely make sense. Uh, you almost always want to open with the playable Sateller, as in uh, Una Kalhai and Deneb. So you max out on both of them just to um, see them uh, as much as possible. And lastly, we've got two Vegas. Um, this deck is Triver Spam, and it's too important to have Vega because this is your enabler that allows you to go into your win condition. So you need at least two. I know in my previous build I was running three, but uh, I needed to fit other cards in this deck, so I had to drop it from three to two. And that's it for the monster lineup. That's 11 monsters. Now on to the spells. We've got triple reinforcement of the army. Um, I don't know why this card's still at three. This card helps this deck so much. Um, next we've got triple upstart goblin. Um, I've been debating between playing this and pot of duality. Um, but I, in the end, I decided that since this deck is the Triver Spam version of the deck, um, Duality hinders this deck too much from doing its major plays. So Upstart is um, really good, and I definitely feel that Upstart just allows consistency to thrive. And next, we've got two Mystical Space Typhoon. Uh, I was I used to be maining three, but now the Clifford's going to be a lot less relevant. Um, two is definitely the optimal amounts in this deck. Uh, you still need it for like the random Yosenju's matchups where you have to MST there either macro or defi, but uh, two will suffice. And then next we've got one Raigeki and one Book of Moon. Uh, these are your one ofs. Um, Raigeki's really good versus the Burning Abyss because you just go Dweller, Raigeki, and they absolutely cannot come back from that. And Book of Moon is really good out and really versatile, you know, out to the Dijin Lock. And lastly, I've been really debating about playing this card. This is major tech. But one Swords of Revealing Light. If you guys don't like this and you feel this is absolutely terrible um, and too gimmicky, then you could drop this for a bottomless. But that's what I replaced it with. But this card is so insane. In testing, just since this is the Trevor Spam version of the deck, um, this card is so amazing. Like, this lets you. Uh, just bouncing this back to your hand and activating it is so good. Um, if you Again, if you don't like it, you feel it's gimmicky, you could uh, definitely replace it with a bottomless. But. I definitely like it, and I, I definitely run it. And yeah, so that's it for the spells. That's 11 spells. Now onto the traps. Uh, we've got three uh, Satellar Nova Alpha, the Psalm Judgment of the deck. Um, since you run 11 Satellar Nights, this card is almost always live, so maxing out on three is definitely uh, feasible and practical. Uh, next, we've got Triple Call of the Haunted, and it's Partner in Crime, Triple Oasis. Uh, this, again, this does seem bad on paper, it does seem really cloggy, but the fact that you're running triple Unical High and triple Satellite uh, Deneb makes these cards so amazing, and just bouncing these back with Trevor, you almost always win the game whenever you can accomplish that. So, again, maxing out on these cards um, is really, really smart. Um, next, we've got triple Fiendish Chain. Um, again, I made a lot of changes from my deck after uh, Cliff Orts got the major hit. I dropped Mirror Force from 3 to 1 in this deck, and I replaced him with a Fiendish Chains. 
Uh, this card is really good against Exciton Knight, which is a major problem for this deck since this deck always has advantage and always has, you know, face-up continuances like calls and oasises and finishes face-up, so you're, you're always susceptible to uh, Exciton. So this card is really helpful to dealing with that. And Trivers too strong with this card. Uh, next, we've got the obligatory Triple Mind Crush. Uh, this card is going to be so good in the coming format. Uh, I know this card was absolutely insane towards the end of the format. Everyone was maxing out on three. But I feel this card is going to be staple at three just because it majorly hurts Necros and BA, which are going to be the two best decks. So Triple Mind Crush is almost obligatory. And next, we get into the one ofs and the traps. Uh, we've got. One Saw Morning, um, I'm indifferent about this card. This card wins you and loses you games. Going second, this card's pretty bad. And the 2,000 life points kind of relevant. So um, I'm trying to find a way to where I could drop this card. But for now, it'll stay in there. Uh, next, we've got one Torrential Tribute. Um, this card is really good in this deck because every one of your monsters is a floater. So it really doesn't hurt you. And just stopping an OTK from the BA is really important. And this is a massive field remover and is honestly really unexpected, so it definitely comes in clutch. And then we've got the one Mirror Force. Again, I was running three before the format shifted, um, but I definitely feel that it's going to see a gradual decline in play now that Cliff Forts are less relevant. And yeah, so that's it for the traps. That's 18 traps. No Compulse, uh, no Bottomless. Compulse is just too irrelevant, doesn't do anything. Uh, compulsing a ritual is absolutely terrible. And for Bottomless, again, that card was only amazing versus Cliff Warts, so you definitely had to drop that. So that's it for the main deck, that's 40 cards. Now onto the extra. We got two Trevere, this is your win condition of the deck. Uh, one Delteros, uh, obligatory. Uh, one Diamond, um, I've been trying to run fit two, but it's just way too tight. But this deck definitely wins you the BA matchup. Uh, we got the one Tsukiyomi, we know how this card goes with the combos. Uh, then we've got one Honor Arc and one Castell. They're both really good in certain situations. Um, for example, sometimes you don't want to um, Castell their Exciton on the, um, the in the Necros matchup so they can't Excite on you again. So you want to sometimes Honor Arc it and take it. And just little stuff like that uh, merits the spot of the Honor Arc. Uh, next we've got the Exciton, Nagusto, Self Explanatory, the one. Uh, Abyss Dweller, really good versus BA, uh, and with the Raigeki. The one Carnagorgon to protect your um, Floodgates, which you side. And then one Concealer Omega, because I know some people are going to still try to play like 2-3 to three Mirror Force. And this card absolutely destroys that card. Uh, next we've got the one Diamond Dire. Uh, this card is just way too versatile to not play. The one um, Ragnar Zero. I know I said Cliff Horton's going to see a decline in play, but I definitely still think this card is way too good in a lot of situations and uh, can honestly win you a lot of games. And lastly, we got the Cowboy for game, just because you need it to seal the deal in certain games. And now on to the side deck. Uh, so we've got Triple Max C. I've been debating between this and Flying C, but I definitely feel uh, this card's a lot more versatile than Flying C, but... Flying C could, can be viewed as more detrimental. So, versus BA, right now I'm sticking to Max C, but this may be changed to Flying C in the future. Next, we've got two Artifact Lancia. This is your key to beating Necros. Uh, if you go, don't know what this card does, you discard it from your hand, and for the rest of the turn, your opponent can't banish stuff. So, essentially, use the, this. it could be used during either player's turn. So, essentially, what you do is during your opponent's turn, whenever they're trying to banish their Necros to get searches, uh, you activate this. Pitch it to grave, and then during your turn, you activate, you go into Trevir, chain, call the haunted, and then add this back to your hand. So this is essentially a recurring Imperial Iron Wall, and it's not susceptible to MST. So this card's absolutely insane with the triple call the haunted and Oasis because you can get multiple uses out of it, and it's not susceptible to MST. And it's really detrimental to Necros, and yeah, I just love it. Uh, next, we've got the third MST, uh, just in case you see you go against you know, Senju or maybe Clifforts, because uh, I know some people are still going to be running them. Two Wiretap. I don't know if you guys remember, but whenever um, traps were relevant in this game, uh, Wiretap was absolutely insane and a huge momentum card. So in matchups where traps are relevant, like the you know, Senju matchup, you side this in, and it definitely gives you a major advantage. Just the ability to end a chain with the counter trap, and unless they have another counter trap, you just end the chain. Uh, Wiretap's just too insane. It definitely wins me the Yosenju matchup uh, single-handedly. 
Uh, we've got the triple uh, shadow imprisoning mirror and the soul drain. Uh, BA is real. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Uh, next, we've got two fairy winds. Um, Clifford is sometimes gonna be relevant just in case um, some people play it. And also, this card is really good versus send you. You know, hitting tankies, macros. Um, it, if they side light imprisoning mirrors, uh, so yeah, fairy winds definitely still a side deck option that you need. And lastly, we've got the one bottomless just because this card is insane in the Clifford matchup. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I know I've been gone for a really long time, but hopefully this was a quality um, deck profile. I definitely wanted to give you guys something that you could uh, definitely enjoy and hopefully use in your testing. Uh, definitely feel this is the best rogue deck. Um, I definitely feel it's better than you send you. And if you run this deck um, well and definitely use good text, you could definitely win an event with this. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I've been playing around with GOAT lately. I've been really... Um, you know, just bored with the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh scene right now, so I've definitely been playing GOAT. So if you guys want to see a profile on my GOAT deck and my other decks from the GOAT format, uh, definitely give this video a like. I've been really interested in that. And I might start a series like I'm getting like tutorials on GOAT format just to get better, because I definitely feel that format is the best format ever and is really beneficial to any Yu-Gi-Oh player if you want to get better at this game. So yeah, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Give the video a like, subscribe,